it's almost hurtful for me to watch her be so dumb it's giving <laughs> melanin queen it's giving class elegance <laughs> money i was a fantasy snob i'll say it now i was all her seven husbands <laughs> her seven husbands hello everyone my name is divine and welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel so today i'm going to finally be telling you all the books i read in 2022 if you follow me on TikTok, you will have seen a few of these books already, but if not, here is the full video. My reading goal in 2022 was 15 books and I finished the year reading 28 books. I hate spoilers, so if you also hate spoilers, you're in a safe place because I won't be sharing any spoilers. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what each book is about, just in case you're interested and you want to read it as well. The first book that I read in 2022 is People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. I think it's written by a husband and wife. This book is a thriller mystery, which is different to my usual type. It's about this Instagram mom. She gets this stalker and this stalker like finds their way into the mom's life and everything like that. You can see the mom, everything that she has to think about before posting it on social media. And it's really interesting. This is in the perspective of the mom, the dad, and the stalker. Like, really getting into their brain. And one reason that I like this book is the title. The title is People Like Her. So it's like, is it people like her as in people that are similar to her or is it people like her as in people like her on social media so i thought that was a really good play on words i rated it three stars i didn't really connect to the characters much until the epilogue also whenever the stalker was speaking i felt a little bit uneasy so i feel like that's a good sign like it's a mystery book so they really did that really well the second book that i read in 2022 is none other than the Fine Print by Lauren Asher and this is the first book that I ever tabbed so it holds such a special place in my heart. So The Fine Print is the first book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. So this is a series of three billionaire brothers and they have this task to complete so that they can get their inheritance and it's basically like a Disneyland romance. This book is dual POV between the guy who is Rowan and the girl who is Zara. I actually really like Zara, she's one of my favourite book characters just because I think she's really strong and I really like that. It's a workplace, enemies to lovers and grumpy sunshine. I rated it 3 stars just because I was just like, it's okay. I enjoyed it for the most part. The third book that I read in 2022 is none other than We Were Liars by E. Lockhart and actually this is such a short book but it's so good. For me reading this book felt like poetry and I don't know why but it was such an easy read, just short sentences, really fast paced and I really enjoyed it. Let me read the back. We were liars, we are beautiful and privileged and we are cracked and broken, a tale of love and romance a tale of tragedy which are lies which is truth you decide and that's all that's on the back it was one of those books where when i finished reading it i literally just had to lay down and stare up at the ceiling because i needed to like rethink everything <laughs> i recommend this to pretty much anyone so first five star of the year goes to we were liars by e lockhart the fourth book that i read this year is it ends with us by colleen hoover i started rereading it but i left it in my book bag and so it's kind of bent now oh my gosh but it's okay because i think i'm gonna get the collector's edition of this book um and try to like straighten this one out. If you've watched my tabbing video, you would see that if I tab blue, then that means that there's been a lot of sad moments. I just love a book that's gonna make me cry and this one did it. In my opinion, this is a really good book. I love Colleen Hoover's books because of how she writes and the plot twist. I predict a lot of books. I predict them like it's nobody's business and so having a book that just comes out the most random things i really do love that a lot of people are upset that it's marketed as a romance book and so 
maybe don't go in there thinking that it's a romance book. The romance isn't the reason for the book. It's much more than just a romance. There are heavy topics in this book as well, so you may want to check the trigger warnings. I went into this book having not checked anything about it. Um, <laughs> I just knew that a lot of people cried at this book. If you're gonna make me cry, I'm going to like you. If you're a book and a movie, I feel like this is a really good book and such an important message inside of it and it really changed my perspective on a lot of things and so read at your own warning but I'd still recommend this. I have recommended it and everyone that I recommended it to has good reviews for the most part. <laughs> I rated this five stars. So the next book that I read is Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hubert and uh, <laughs> I don't know if Talia Hubert is known for being like a spice queen but like Talia Hubert girl okay anyways this is a bit off topic but Talia Hibbert's about me section I always read about the author and if there was an author that I want to meet it's you it's you because you just seem so cool so fun and yeah this is the second book in the Brown Sisters series. This is the first book in the series, which is Get Alive Chloe Brown. Then we have Take a Hint Danny Brown. The covers of these books are so cute, by the way. So Danny Brown is tired of dating. She don't want any heartbreak. And so she tells the universe that she just wants like a friends with benefits type of vibe. And it's like a workplace romance. It's fake dating, friends to lovers. He's grumpy, but like in the best way. It's like a touch her and I'll kill you type of grumpy he is a security guard and she is a teacher so i rated this book three stars because i loved the start and i loved the end but i didn't really connect with the middle so the next book that i read actually it was an audiobook that penguin random house sent to me it is Yinka Where's Your Husband by Lizzie Damilola Blackburn. This book is actually set in London and it's about a black girl and she's actually Christian and I found the character relatable even though she annoyed me a lot. You know, you, when you're growing up, everybody's like, mm, don't have a boyfriend, don't have a boyfriend. And then when you get to 18, they're like, why are you not married? Basically, this is that in book form and I found it really interesting. There were things that were spoken about that I was just like, wow, I didn't even realize that that was a norm. There's good character development. She is one of those girls where you know when your friend is constantly like, I don't look nice. I am so ugly na, 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 na. and you're like oh my gosh you're so beautiful what are you talking about this is the book and I predicted a lot of it one thing that I don't like is predicting books <sighs> it was nice to get that off my chest <laughs> I rated it a 3.75 if that book was made into a movie I would really enjoy that so guys if you can do that for us I feel like that would be a really good movie then another book sent to me by Penguin Random House is Book Lovers they sent me the audiobook but I loved it so much that my god brother actually bought me the hard cover from America because I find that the US cover there's two covers the UK cover and the US cover and I found that the US cover was more accurate to the actual story this is actually a small town romance enemies to lovers grumpy grumpy and this one is for the older siblings I loved this from the start and when I say the start I mean from the first sentence to the very last sentence I loved everything. I loved how it was written. Emily Henry was basically making fun of book lovers. I was being made fun of and I ate it up and I would do it again. I thought it was just so funny. I was laughing out loud throughout the book. Charlie Lastra is one of my book boyfriends. When I read this I was like okay I need to read every single book that Emily Henry has ever written but then I was like let me save them to the summer because they're summer books you know. I got to summer and I didn't read any books. I read one book and you'll find out about that later. Emily Henry, I have all your books. I just, I just need to read them. I'm waiting for that summer vibe. So the next book that I read was Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. This book was great. I feel like it was one of my favorite books of the year. It's a short book as well. It's a little bit of fantasy. I chose it as my first ever book club book because I wanted to start getting into fantasy. It's fantasy in the sense that 
when a couple kisses, she sees their whole relationship, how it starts and how it ends and in between. And it just flashes before her eyes and that really makes her think, yeah, no, forget that. It really puts her off of love. I rate it 4.5 stars. So many great quotes because Nicola Yoon, in the acknowledgements, I always read the acknowledgements, she was actually going through quite a lot when she wrote this book, which I believe came clutch when she was like trying to get them quotes out. Those quotes, I feel like you have to have been through something to get your quotes so good. The next book that I read was Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I didn't exactly love it because pretty much they're friends with benefits but like in such a toxic way. There were times that oh my gosh I was just screaming at the book thinking girl, girl, it's almost hurtful for me to watch her be so dumb. You can't pay me enough money to be in the situation that this girl was in. I <laughs> no, no. This is why love turns people into idiots, you know. I'll read the books, but jeez man, the cover is really nice as well. Um, but yeah. No. It's steamy. If you like steamy books, then this is for you. But I just feel like the start of the book was just a bit too steamy for me so i didn't enjoy that this is why i know that i really like colleen hoover's writing because even though i didn't like what was happening for half of the book i still enjoyed the writing style i feel like the writing style for this is just so so nice like i just really like how and i'm not even just talking about the words that are on the page i mean like how it looks if you ever read a colleen hoover book you will know that how it's written on the actual page is like you can see the art oh my gosh it's a bit dramatic but it's just I love how she writes and obviously the plot twist. These plot twists, like sometimes they're a bit like, okay. But I enjoyed this book. I rated it four stars. So the next book that I finished was Anxious People by Frederick Backman. And this is around the time that I decided to start doing audiobooks for the books that are out of my comfort zone, but I still really want to read. And this was one of them. It is a mystery and I actually enjoyed it, surprisingly. I didn't think I would like it, but I got a lot of good quotes from it. And basically there has been a bank robbery and there's all these anxious people and you're hearing about their lives and the stories that they have before they got to this bank robbery and what led them there. This is an adaptation. I think it was originally Swedish. I really enjoyed it. I rated it four stars. It was low-key deep. It was actually quite deep, you know, in most parts. The next book that I read is Real by Kennedy Ryan and this is my first ever Kennedy Ryan book and it will not be my last. I enjoyed this book. I think the writing was so good to the point where even when I predicted something was going to happen, if it did happen, I was still like, <gasps> whoa, as if I didn't predict it anyways. That's how good the writing was. This is a long book, but it's not a slow burn. It made me cry as well because I learned a lot about, I don't want to say what, <laughs> but I learned a lot in this book. There's also history in this book. It was a good book. I would recommend. It's a workplace romance, obviously, because they're filming a movie. Grumpy Sunshine. She's like a great actor and he's like a fantastic director. I rated it 4.5. So the next book that I finished is The Maid and it is by Nita Prose. This book is a murder mystery and it follows a main character called Molly and this Molly girl, she's like so perfect and so delusional. She is the maid at this hotel and basically she goes to clean a room of this really rich guy and he's dead in the bed. And so she's like, um, you know, what do I even do? And because she's just like so perfect, um, a lot of the other characters 
think that she's so weird and this really adds to the story um i did this on an audiobook but i didn't really enjoy it it is a great story i would love to watch this as a movie i just didn't really enjoy the book the audiobook itself was good i feel like it's the book itself i rated it two stars and it just took me a long while to finish <laughs> the thing is though I'd actually recommend it because I feel like it's just a me no is it a me I don't know the only book that I read in the summer is throttled by Lauren Asher look at this if you don't already know I love Formula One and I love romance books and so this book is a romance book about Formula One so I was like okay I found it this is it like no other book will ever live up to this. I haven't read it, but I know that it's going to be my favorite book. Um, I think that's where I went wrong. Basically, he is a Formula One driver and she is the brother of his rival. It's like a forbidden romance and it they're traveling around the world because it's Formula One and she's a vlogger. It is interesting. I rated it 3.5 stars. Also comes with a playlist at the start of the book. The next book that I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I rated it 4 stars and it's basically about this really famous lady called Evelyn Hugo and she pulls this girl in um what's the girl's name Monique or something yes Monique a writer to basically write her life story all her seven husbands <laughs> her seven husbands and it's set like the 1950s to the 1980s um Evelyn Hugo is a really interesting character. She is a star. There were some quotes that are like, you know when you sit down with somebody who's been through life and they tell you life advice and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It was more about Evelyn's story, all that she went through to get to where she is, and um, Monique trying to figure out of all the people that she could have chosen to write her life story why me it is interesting so the next book that I read is the Spanish love deception by Elena Armez this has my dream book trope combo which is enemies to lovers fake dating with a little bit of jealousy while reading it I was giddy I was laughing the characters are lovable it is a grumpy sunshine there's bits of Spanish in it I rated it four stars directly after reading that book I read the American rumor experiment by Elena Armez. This book is Friends to Lovers. It's not fake dating but if you read it you'll kind of understand what I mean and it's close proximity. This is a spin-off from The Spanish Love Deception. Rosie is actually the best friend of Catalina and she is currently living in her apartment because her apartment busted so um she's in the apartment and then suddenly lucas shows up and he is one of my book boyfriends oh my gosh he can cook he's fun he is also a surfer he tries to inspire her writing for the book which is why i'm like it's kind of fake dating but they're not pretending to be a couple they're just doing a couple things it's a slow burn and so is this actually I really enjoyed this there is also bits of Spanish in this one I rated this 4.5 stars this guy Lucas is actually such a golden retriever and it was just so sweet it's low-key a forbidden romance because obviously she didn't want her best friend to know that she fancies her cousin because her best friend was always like if you read Spanish Love Deception you'd hear that Catalina was always like Ew, that's my cousin. You can't have a crush on my cousin. That's so weird. So the next book that I read is You Reach Sam by Dustin Th Th I really don't want to butcher that name, so I'm not even going to attempt it. Um, it's not even hard, though, but it's Dustin. Dustin Theo? I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that, so by Dustin. It's quite sad. This book is actually quite a short book. It's about this girl called Julia. Her boyfriend Sam dies and it's a little bit fantasy. Basically she calls him and he picks up the phone and so that's not a spoiler. That's not a spoiler. It's actually in the summary of the book. She calls his phone and he picks up but like he's dead so she's thinking 
how are you answering the phone? It's YA. I didn't expect it to make me cry. I, like, I thought it was going to make me cry because it made everybody cry. And if a book makes everybody cry, then sure enough, it's going to make me cry. But while I was reading it, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. I feel like it was just at some random part that... I realized that water was just leaking from my eyeballs and then guys so you know you've seen the journey of me trying to read fantasy books I decided to listen to the dramatized audio version of A Court of Thorns and Roses the thing is this book was so good so good by Sarah J Maas it was so good that I was low-key like upset because I did not want to give it a five stars. I was like, how am I going to give a fantasy book five stars? I was a fantasy snob. I'll say it now. I was. I think I rated this one four stars. It's enemies to lovers, forbidden romance, anything else. Th they're fairies. And don't let that put you off because it put me off. I was like, why am I reading a book about fairies? How are these people so weird? Like, why would you read about fairies? But like, you do you, obviously. But when I read it, I am now a fantasy girly. Am I a fantasy girly? Not like a huge fantasy girly, but like I'm there. I'm there now. If you recommend to me to read a book about fairies and humans falling in love, I'll do it. These books are big, okay? Um, the characters though, you really get attached to the characters. Why I'd recommend for you to read the dramatized audio version is because the dramatized audio version has different actors for every voice. It has sound effects and music in the background. It's like they really put so much effort into it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Then I read Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. If you've watched Hayley Fam, you know that she recommends this book like she gets paid commission. And I get it because this is such a wholesome book. It's just so good. Like, it's such a feel good book. It feels like home. There's some heavy topics in it, but for the most part, it's just so lighthearted and fun. There's a lot of romance movies and romance books and music references. It's enemies to lovers, but not just enemies to lovers, childhood enemies to lovers. It's also fake dating because Wes is helping Liz get this other guy that Liz has a crush on, has had a crush on since childhood and she wants to go to prom with this guy so Wes is basically helping her to win him over. This is probably one of the most aesthetic books that I've ever read and I rated it 4.9 and the reason that I rated it 4.9 is a little bit petty and I don't care because I'd do it again. I rated it 4.9 because there was a Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez reference and I just, I just wasn't having it. I loved Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez together. I absolutely shipped them 100% but then when they broke up, you know, multiple times. But when they broke up the final time and he started dating Hailey Bieber, I just loved him and Hailey Bieber. And Hailey Bieber is a person, I just really like her. Not saying I don't like Selena Gomez, that's not the point. Anyways, I just didn't like that there was a Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez reference, but because I loved this book so much, I still had to give it a rating it deserved, but it would be a five star if it wasn't for that. The next book that I read is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I think that's how you pronounce the name. I listened to this on Audible and it's a fantasy book again. I rated it three stars. It's enemies to lovers, forbidden romance, fake dating, and there's just so much going on but I predicted a lot of it and so that takes away my excitement. So it's called Red Queen because everyone either has silver blood or red blood and the silver bloods are the elites and they have like powers and the red bloods are seen as less than and they don't have any because they don't have any powers and they have to get the lesser jobs that pay literally nothing and they're actually risking your health most of the times and they just don't care. The Silvers don't care about the Reds. Basically, the main character is actually a Red Blood, but she has silver abilities, which is just blows everyone's mind because they're like, how can a Red Blood have our silver abilities? There was a romance part in it though that I was like, how did we get, when did we get here? It kind of reminded me of, you know, like the Hunger Games Divergent series, how big that was. It reminded me of that. So 
I guess I'd watch it if it was a movie. Then I read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. It's a fictional book about this girl called Pecola. It's blurry. But this black girl feels like she's not beautiful enough because she's not white pretty much. Throughout the entire book it was just sad. It was written years ago and it was crazy to see. Especially for black people, life was just like whoa and it touches on colorism as well and the story is important but it felt like i was reading a school book it was a book club book but i'm happy that i read it i didn't rate it either because it was like i didn't enjoy reading it but it was a good book so where do i rate that the next book that i read is love in other words by christina lauren i had such high hopes for this book it's written in past and present perspective and it's basically about childhood friends to lovers but like it's a second chance romance macy and her dad they have this house elliot is the neighbor and macy and elliot become best friends they read together all the time they're literally like this throughout the book he's such a golden retriever it's also about found family the characters especially elliot he literally says exactly what he means. I rated it four stars. I actually tabbed it at the top. I want you to actually see my tabbing because I'm actually quite proud. So I tabbed it at the top, whereas I usually tab it at the side. Oh, the next book that I read, well, listen to the dramatized audio version is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. This is another five star, my last five star read of this year last year sorry this book was so good that when i finished reading it i was upset i was like why is it so good it had no business being this good it's like sarah j mass thought of the entire series before she even released one book it was just written in such a great way if you love the found family trope then you will love this it's a thick book by the way <laughs> I would recommend that you read this if if you can handle like fairies no because I didn't think I could handle fairies either but like you have to go in there with a particular mindset of this is not realistic and once you get over that it's so good then terms and conditions by lauren asher it's a grumpy sunshine marriage of convenience fake dating and it's the second book in the dreamland billionaire series this is in the perspective of declan and iris iris is black so it's, it's already giving premium black girl it's giving <laughs> melanin queen it's giving class elegance <laughs> money it's given everything that's a TikTok that I made, but I don't know how I've like memorized it still. Declan is a Formula One fan and Lauren Asher actually wrote the Formula One series. So she actually joined that world into this world. I love when people do that, like joining the worlds together. I rated it four stars. There were some good quotes in this book. I loved it at the start and then I kind of started to disconnect with it like halfway through but I loved the ending and the epilogues then I listened to the audiobook of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen Jane Austen who hello <laughs> I listened to the audiobook of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and that is because it's just a classic and I just figured like come on now you gotta read a classic uh, and it's romance as well and it was included in my audible package. I rated it three stars I feel like I should have read it rather than listen to it because there were so many characters to keep up with But how can that be an excuse when I listened to the Akatar series? Akatar is A Court of Thorns and Roses if you don't know which are the audiobooks that I just hyped They have so many different characters, but still I kept up with it, but with Pride and Prejudice I just I couldn't keep up. I felt bored. Oh my gosh, that is so rude. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna watch the movie. I think I watched the movie, but I watched like the Asian version. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch it again. And I feel like I'm gonna really love the movie more than I liked the book which as a book lover is a little bit rude but that's i'm just being honest my review of it that i literally wrote in my notes app i don't always give public reviews so i think it was just okay i did do the audio version and to be honest most of the time i didn't know where the story was going maybe it would be better if i watched the movie instead of listening to the book because i would actually see the characters happy i finished it though as it's a classic <laughs> 
<laughs> so I pretty much listened to it because it's a classic. The last book that I read in 2022 is From Look Up With Love by Mariana Zapata. Oh my gosh, what a way to end my year. This was such a good book. It's a slow burn. It feels like more than just a romance. It feels like a story but of life. This is a figure skating romance and they are enemies. They can't be in the same room with each other without like coming at each other and when I say they make fun of each other like sometimes my jaw was dropping like I was like oh, how can you say that also it's included in Kindle Unlimited I just didn't want to have to hold such a thick book so I read it on Kindle and I'm just so happy I ended my year with this I gave it a 4.75 because at the start, like the first 10%, I was like, just cut to the chase. What Mariana Zapata was doing was really talking in detail in the best way possible. After reading this book, when I read other books, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you guys aren't writing in enough detail because Mariana Zapata has changed me. I don't think I'll ever be the same. Uh, hopefully I can read shorter books and like get through them and be happy. <laughs> When I woke up the next day and I realized, wait, I'm finished that book, I was sad because I was like, those characters are gone. The characters are developed so well, written so well to the point where you just feel like you know them. And it's only one perspective as well, which is also really good. I will now be reading more Mariana Zapata because if her books are like this, it's a yes from me. That is every book that I read in 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm going to put these down because I'm now out of breath. But if you have any other book recommendations, please leave them in the comments. And if you want to see more book related videos from me, then you can check out my TikTok. And sometimes I post some quick things on Instagram. And if you've read any of these, please let me know. Also, this is my Kindle. You know those children that are like, do you have games on your phone? That was literally me just doing. But like, yeah, here's my Kindle. And if you enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can see more book content. Thank you guys for stopping by. Bye guys. Bye.